Hello class, today we'll be going over chapter 15 and that is speaking to inform. So an informative speech is a speech that's designed to convey knowledge and understanding about a certain topic. You'll be describing an object, showing how something works, report on an event or explain a concept. So for this type of speech, your aim will be to convey knowledge and understanding Remember not to advocate a cause, not yet. We'll be doing that with our persuasive speeches. So your speech is usually judged in light of three main general criteria. Is the information communicated accurately? Is the information communicated clearly? And is the information made meaningful and interesting to the audience? Most people would not consider themselves public speakers but much of the jobs that um, currently um, do involve absorbing and communicating information clearly and accurately. So this is a skill that we all need and will be using at some point. The speech skill most important to a job that is ranked number one is informative speaking. Public speaking to inform occurs in a wide range of everyday situations whether it's the business manager explaining next year budget, whether it's the architect that's reviewing plans for a new building, the, new, the union leader informing members about a new contract, the church worker outlining plans for a fund drive, there are endless situations in which people need to inform others. So competence in this form of communication will prove valuable to you throughout uh, your life. There are different types of informative speak, uh, speeches, and we'll be talking about analysis and the organization for each. But the main ones that we'll be discussing are speeches about objects, speeches about processes, speeches about events, and speeches about concepts. So let's talk about the first category. Uh, object is anything that is visible, tangible, and stable in form. Objects might have moving parts, they might be alive. So they might include places, structures, animals, or even people. An example of a speech about an object would be um, talking about 3D printers or the Great Barrier Reef or dream catchers. So you will not have time to tell your audience everything about that subject, but instead you'll choose a specific purpose that focuses on one aspect of your subject. So an example of these three would be to inform my audience about the medical uses of 3D printers. Uh, there's so much information out there for 3D printers. So you have to figure out how you're going to narrow and what is your purpose, your specific purpose. The second example would be to inform my audience about the role of dream catchers in Native American cultures. And thirdly, to inform my audience about the major ecological features of the Great Barrier Reef. When we are talking about speeches of objects, there are specific ways that you would be organizing your main points. So you'll notice how precise the statements are about the objects. They are not too vague. If your specific purpose is to explain the history or evolution of your subject, then you will want to use the chronological order of organizing it. Chronological order is a method of speech organization in which those main points follow a time pattern. So let's say you are wanting to inform your audience about the major achievements of Kobe Bryant, then you're gonna be using the chronological order, a timeline order. So basically this order involves a time sequence. In this approach, the order does matter a great deal. A paper or speech that's focused on history or events would often use a chronological order. So you are putting things in place by time and that will help you and your speech be a lot more clear to your audience. If your specific purpose is to describe the main features of your subject, then you're gonna want to use the spatial order method. And that is in which those main points follow a directional pattern. If your purpose is to inform the audience about the geographical regions of a major river, then you would want to divide it into the main sections, such as maybe the scenic parks, the wildlife, and its connection to a major body of water. So spatial order 
that method of organization is about location and direction. It involves terms such as up and down, left and right, top and bottom, north and south, so on. So it's highly descriptive order that allows the audience to have firsthand experience of what you will be sharing. For example, if you're speaking about a city, then you might want to divide the main points by geographic regions, such as north, south, east, and west. Some speeches about objects will fall in topical order. Topical order is a method of speech organization in which the main points divide that topic into logical and consistent subtopics. So if you plan to inform the audience about the three major features of the Washington Monument, then a topical order of organization would be maybe to organize it by the obelisk, the gardens, and the reflective pool. Topical order involves the topic of your speech where you're dividing it into several subtopics and these subtopics are related to the topic as they are coming from it. So for example, if you're giving a speech on maybe the topic of basketball, you might have these following subtopics, the history of basketball, the rules of basketball, and the greatest players in basketball. So no matter what organizational method you use, just be sure to follow the guidelines that uh, we will be discussing in chapter nine uh, pretty soon. And that is limit your speech to two to five main points, keep those main points separate, try to use the same pattern of wording for all your main points, and you want to balance the amount of time that you devote to each of those main points. So now let's talk about speeches about processes. Processes, a systematic series of actions that leads to a specific result or product. Speeches about processes will explain how something is made, how something is done, or how something works. So examples of a good specific purpose statement for these types of speeches would be to inform my audience how to write an effective job resume, to inform my audience how tsunamis develop, or to inform my audience how to read Braille. There are two kinds of informative speeches about processes. One explains a process so that the listeners will understand it better, such as a speech to inform the audience how a nuclear power plant works. The second type would be, it explains a process so that the audience will be better able to perform that process themselves. So your goal in that kind of speech is to have the audience actually learn the skill. Maybe a speech about how to take pictures like a professional photographer. Both kinds of speeches might require visual aids. At least you can use maybe a chart outlining the steps or some type of ways or techniques for that process. When informing about a process, you will usually arrange your speech in a chronological order because you are explaining step-by-step step from beginning to end. Sometimes rather than step-by-step, step, you will focus on the major principles of the techniques. For this kind of speech, you will usually use the topical order. Concise organization is especially important in speeches about processes. You must make sure that each step is clear and easy to follow. Now let's talk about speeches about events. An event is anything that happens or is regarded as happening. Some examples of topics for informative speech on events are carnivals, cheerleading, seasonal affective disorder. As usual, you will need to narrow down your focus and then pick a specific purpose that you can accomplish in a short speech, such as to inform my audience about the major events at Carnival in Rio de Janeiro, or to inform my audience about the experience of being a university cheerleader. Also, to inform my audience about the causes, symptoms, and treatment of seasonal affective disorder. If your specific purpose is to recount the history of an event, then once again, you're going to use the method of organizing it called chronological order. You can approach an event from almost any angle or combination of angles, features, origins, implications, benefits, future developments, and so on. 
In such cases, you will organize your speech in topical order. So you should also make sure that your main points subdivide the subject logically and consistently. Speech is about concepts. Concept is a belief, theory, idea, notion, principle, or the like. And concepts are more abstract than objects, processes, and events. So sometimes these can be a little bit more difficult. An example of a concept would be uh, astrology or human rights, minimalism. Speeches about concepts are usually organized in topical order and focus on the main features or aspects of your concepts. Another approach is to define the concept, identify its major elements, and illustrate it with examples. Here's an example. Let's say your topic is homeschooling. So you would define and explain what that concept is. And then your subtopics, which you're using topical order, would be maybe the types of different homeschooling. So you have the classical model, you would define it and provide information about it. The Charlotte Mason model, same thing, and define it and provide information, and the Montessori model. Speeches about concepts are often more complex than the others, so you want to pay close attention, avoid technical language, define terms clearly, and use plenty of examples and comparisons to illustrate those concepts. That way your audience can better grasp and understand them. So back to informative speeches. The lines dividing the speeches about objects, processes, events, and concepts are not always absolute. Some subjects might fit into one or more category. An example would be the Great Pyramid of Giza. This would be considered an object. But if you focus your speech on how the pyramid was built, then that would be a speech about a process. Regardless of how you approach your topic, be sure to give listeners plenty of help in sorting out the facts and ideas. One way is using enough transitions, internal previews, and internal summaries. Some guidelines for informative speaking. First, you don't want to overestimate what the audience knows. What we mean by that is to not assume that the audience already knows the things that you are covering. Rather, you must be sure to explain everything so thoroughly that they cannot help but understand. Number two, you want to relate the subject directly to the audience. You should tie the topic in with their interests and concerns. Whenever you can put your listeners into the body of the speech, do it. Find ways to talk about your topic in terms of your listeners. Here's an example of how you can do that. Let's read the first example. High traffic areas provide ideal environmental conditions for bed bugs to spread. High density locations such as dorms, apartment buildings, and transportation terminals are among the most likely places to find bed bugs. Now, let's look at the other example where we actually put the audience in to help them actually relate to the topic. Bed bugs spread most rapidly in places that have lots of people coming and going. If you live in the dorms or an apartment, if you travel through airports, train stations, and bus stations, or if you stay in hotels and motels, you're passing through prime breeding ground for bed bugs. You'll notice that the frequent use of you and your will help relate it directly to the audience. Both have the same facts, but the second one really points out how those facts could directly affect the audience. Number three, don't be too technical. The language used to explain subject might be too technical. And even though every activity has its own jargon, when informing a general audience, you want to avoid it as much as possible. So jargon examples would be, let's say in football, layoff, blitz, chip shot, in agriculture, combine, disc, dry farming, in psychology, disassociation, uh, pathologize, pathologize, <laughs> psychosis. So instead, you would need to define and explain what those terms mean. You might be familiar with it, but not everybody. 
So if these are terms, technical terms that are necessary for your speech, just make sure that you clearly define it and explain what it means so that way your audience who might not be familiar with these areas uh, might better understand what you're referring to and talking about within your speech. Number four, you want to avoid abstractions. A speech is not a novel, but still many informative speeches would be improved by color, specificity, and detail. So avoid abstractions by using descriptions. Here's an example, which would be more interesting? I jumped out of a plane and was so scared. The whole experience was exhilarating. I questioned if I made the right choice. Versus if you hear this in a speech, now it is time to jump. My palms are sweating and my heart is pounding so hard, I think it may burst. Get ready, yells the instructor. As I jump into the blue, I wonder, what am I doing here? So you can notice that these two are completely different even though the scenario is the same. One of them is a lot more abstract, not as colorful. The second one is giving you a lot more description where the audience could actually imagine and put themselves in that situation. Another way to avoid abstractions is with comparisons. These put your subject in concrete, familiar terms. Comparisons are statements of similarities among two or more people, events, or ideas. Despite all the negative publicity, sharks pose little danger to human beings. That's one version. Now let's use more of comparisons. According to National Geographic, the US averages less than one fatal shark attack every two years. In comparison, more than 41 people die every year from lightning strikes in the coastal states along. So you can tell with the comparison, you actually have something to compare it to. What does that mean as far as how many people die from being uh, attacked by sharks compared to something that we would think would be a lot less, but actually is a lot more common. Another way to avoid abstractions is contrast. Contrast is a statement of the differences among two or more people, events, or ideas. Here's an example. The championship game of the most recent World Cup was seen by a staggering 1 billion people. Staggering suggests you consider 1 billion a significant number, but it's significant to what? Comparing it to what? So it's really hard for the audience to know, is that good, is that bad? Now let's look at the second example. The championship match of the most recent World Cup was seen by 1 billion people. In contrast, the most recent Super Bowl was seen by 103 million people. Think about it. 10 times more people watched the final game of the World Cup than watched the Super Bowl. Since you have an example and something that you can make that um, contrast to, then you can better understand what that 1 billion means, why it's significant. Number five, you wanna personalize your ideas. Personalize means to present one's ideas in human terms that relate in some fashion to the experience of the audience. So you can give the audience all the facts and numbers or statistics of a topic, but you want it to be more personal. You wanna put a face to the topic, dramatize them in human terms. Let's say you're talking about homelessness as a topic. You can provide all the statistics about it and about the living conditions, or you can also weave into it examples, stories of families who have personally experienced what it's like living um, as a homeless person. So putting a human face on the topic, the speaker takes the topic out of the realm of statistics and then communicates it in more personal terms. And number six, be creative. A good informative speech doesn't have to be just an oral encyclopedia article. It requires a healthy dose of creativity. Use language imaginatively and resourcefully, include visual aids. So just because it's informative, it doesn't mean you have to just regurgitate the facts and statistics. Um, you can actually be creative with your language and make it more interesting. So just to summarize, the four types of informative speeches, the common ones are speeches about objects, about processes, about events, 
and about concepts. And the more common methods of organizing your main points are chronological order. That's where they follow a time pattern, spatial order, which follows a directional pattern or topical order in which you divide your main points of the topic into logical and consistent subtopics. And a summary of the guidelines, don't overestimate what the audience knows, relate the subject directly to the audience, don't be too technical, avoid abstractions, personalize your ideas, and be creative. So that is it for chapter 15. I hope this helped everybody to better prepare for beginning the process of writing and developing your informative speech. If you have any questions, please let me know, email me, or we can also schedule a phone appointment. Thank you.